Tonight on Panorama, we expose corruption at one of Britain's biggest companies. This is not only criminal activity, it is really totally unacceptable. The bribery secrets of British American tobacco, revealed by the man who did their dirty work. Bribing? Yes. Breaking the law? Yes. And you were happy to do that? Yes. We reveal how BAT's bribes undermined a United Nations campaign to save lives. It's using bribery to profit at the cost of people's lives. Simple as that. We track down the politicians and civil servants who took the illegal payments. You took money from BAT, didn't you? You took yes, $3,000. Uh, I don't think so. Listen, man, you're not upsetting me. This is your auntie. And we confront those at the top about corruption at BAT. Why did you not respond to our emails about bribery? Is that the nature of BAT, sir, that you just put up with bribery? British American Tobacco sold 667 billion cigarettes last year. Famous brands like Lucky Strike, Benson and Hedges, and Rothmans. Yes, first smoking that you're bound to like, you just can't beat a Lucky Strike. BAT is Britain's fifth biggest company, and it made four and a half billion pounds profit last year. The company is doing well, says Chief Executive Nicandro Duranti in this glossy corporate video. We are on course to deliver very, very good results for our shareholders in a constant basis. BAT is part of a controversial industry, but it does all it can to portray itself as an ethical, respectable, and law-abiding company. Another promotional video describes BAT's business ethics. We are committed at BAT to operating to the very, very highest standards of corporate conduct, behaving in a responsible way, running our business in a responsible manner all over the world. But our investigation reveals BAT doesn't always meet these standards. Tonight, we'll show how its bribery damaged rival businesses, corrupted national parliaments, and undermined a United Nations campaign to save lives. This is tobacco country in northern Uganda. Thousands of farmers make their living from tobacco here. But some have found a different way to make money from this crop. We're on our way to meet a very important man. This is a guy who helps to decide who gets to buy and sell tobacco. And what we know about the man we're on our way to meet this is corrupt. Dr. Kasirivu Atwuki is the big man in these hills. He's the local MP and sits on an important parliamentary committee. He doesn't know it yet, but we have evidence he's taken bribes from BAT. If an MP, a sitting MP, took a bribe, how would you feel about that? I mean, how, that's not acceptable. You took a bribe, though, didn't you? How, why should I? You, you took $20,000 from BAT. From where? In 2012. No, 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 no. That's not true. But, but Are see, you corrupt? I'm not. But our evidence suggests he is. Dr. Atwuki's parliamentary committee was writing a report on a rival tobacco company, and BAT wanted to see it. confidential document written later by a BAT security contractor and seen by Panorama 
says BAT agreed to pay the MP. To see the report would cost $5,000. The payment was done by a third party, and we received a copy of the draft report. But that was just the start. Atwuki said BAT could amend the report in return for more cash. For this to happen, it would cost $20,000. The contractor said BAT paid the bribe, the MP changed his report, and BAT got what it wanted. They make it very clear that you approached BAT and said, I can show you the first draft of this report for $5,000. Did you do that, yes or no. no? Then they say that if you wanted to amend that report, that would come to $20,000. Did that happen, but, yes or no? It, did well, that happen, yes or no? It did it. The committee report is not written by one person. It is a committee report. And we read through the report, and we agree on it, and people sign. And that's what happens. Very transparent. We know about the bribes because of this man. Paul Hopkins served in the Irish Special Forces. He then worked for BAT in Africa for 13 years. He ran security and anti-smuggling operations, but also arranged BAT's bribe payments. He fell out with the company and was made redundant. Now he's turned whistleblower. I was a commercial hitman. My job was to ensure that the competition never got a breeding space. So BAT, they knew what they wanted you to do and they expected you to get on with it? Yes. And that included bribing? Yes. Breaking the law? Yes. Applying pressure? Yes. Undermining commercial rivals? Yes. And you were happy to do that? Yes. Were you surprised by the sort of things that BAT expected you to do? No. They're quite shocking in this, in this environment, but in, uh, as it was explained to me in Africa, that's the cost of doing business. The documents Paul Hopkins gave us show how far BAT was prepared to go to get its own way, even if it meant undermining a United Nations effort to save lives. Based in Geneva, the UN's World Health Organization is trying to reduce the number of deaths caused by tobacco. 180 countries have signed up to its Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or FCTC. The FCTC wants to reduce the demand for tobacco around the world. They say they're tackling the spread of a habit that kills six million people a year. But BAT had a man on the inside. This is Godfroy Kamwanabusa. He's one of Burundi's representatives at the FCTC. And this is an email from BAT authorizing a bribe that was paid to him. Call Godfroy. He supported us at IMB, so we owe him $3,000. The INB is part of the Tobacco Control Convention. And Kamwanabusa was being bribed to support BAT. I showed the email to the head of the convention. That's BAT paying a representative $3,000. What do you feel about that? It's a company that uh, is irresponsible to say the least. It's using uh, bribery to profit at the cost of people's lives. Simple as that. But it gets worse. 
BAT also bribed this man, a former Rwandan FCTC representative, Bonaventure Nziamana. This bank transfer shows the $20,000 bribe being paid. Dr. Nziamana admitted getting the money, but said it had nothing to do with tobacco or BAT. And an FCTC representative from the Comoros Islands, Chaibu Beja Abdu, was paid $3,000, though he told us he'd never received any money from BAT. So three people involved with the UN's anti-tobacco campaign all being bribed by BAT. What would you like to see happen to BAT as a result of what we've shown you? Well, I think BAT should uh, be investigated by, by the government uh, and should be just uh, punished accordingly. BAT told us... Any company can fall victim to an employee acting inappropriately. We are rightly proud that any alleged breach of our very high expectations of transparency and honesty is swiftly investigated. But Panorama has obtained papers in which BAT describes the payments to the three officials linked to the Tobacco Convention as unlawful bribes. So in these previously unpublished documents, the company admits they were illegal payments. This is Mastermind Tobacco in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. It's one of BAT's main rivals in East Africa. And BAT paid bribes to discover its secrets. These are all the uh, confidential documents we procured from Mastermind. So this? All of this is the fruits of bribery? Yeah, information sources on the board of Massimi. How much money's worth of Black Ops is here? Oh, there could be a couple of hundred thousand pounds. Minutes of the marketing meeting, this would be the most useful. I got to see it usually 12 or 14 hours after it happened. But if you hadn't paid any money, yeah. how many files would we have in front of us? Oh, uh, none. None? <laughs> so this is what you get when you pay the money? Yeah. Paul also arranged bribes to get public officials to hand over details of Mastermind's tax affairs. You ever think, how did I end up doing this? I was a special forces guy, a good guy, and now I'm just corrupt, I'm bribing people. BAT is bribing people, and I'm facilitating it. This is locally meant. We designed this and built this here. We showed the owner of Mastermind the evidence that BAT was waging an illegal campaign against his company. How do you feel about what I've shown you? It's terrible for an organization that claims to be a civilized organization to be involved in activities of this nature. It's wrong, it's unjust, and it's evil. On their website, BAT make great play of the fact that they are an ethical company and they do things by the rules. What do you make of that? That's PR. So BAT managers knew you were bribing people? Yes. And Paul has evidence. This was his boss, Gary Fagan, BAT's area director for East and Central Africa. Paul secretly recorded a conversation with him. They discussed the bribes paid to tax officials at the Kenya Revenue Authority, or KRA. We paid the Kiarega, right Kiarega, a shed load of money. He issued all the tax demands. I mean, we have tax demands now. Fagan seems to know about the bribes, and he certainly doesn't tell Paul to stop. 
How long do you think I'm going to have a job here now? Honestly? Yeah. As long as you want to work. It is illegal for British companies to pay bribes anywhere in the world. They can face unlimited fines if they don't take steps to prevent bribery. This is not only criminal activity, it is really totally unacceptable. What they're doing is they're undermining a system of governance that operates. Gary Fagan denies that he authorised or sanctioned the payment of bribes. But Paul also secretly recorded a BAT lawyer, now Shad Ramley. How are you, sir? Good. Shortly before Paul leaves the company, Ramley agrees they should make final bribe payments to informants at the tax authority, who they call the KRA, and Masterminds board. The guy on the board, we're going to have to close them down. The guy in the career, we're going to have to close them down. Yeah. We're going to have to get something reasonable and keep them out, sir. That's, that's what we're, being, we're going to be paying. Yeah, OK, fine. Anything else? that you, you think will need to be paying for. Now, Shad Ramley says he has never been involved in illegal activities or bribes, and he reported the whistleblower Paul Hopkins to senior BAT management. Whistleblower isn't the only former employee who says BAT paid bribes. I'm in Uganda for the court case of this former BAT lobbyist. Solomon Muita says BAT managers told him to give cash to 50 people. BAT fired him. They say he's lying. He's suing them for wrongful dismissal. My case is that everything I gave me was authorised by the company. Is it your case that making these payments was legal? Well, yes or no? Let's make it simple. I am not sure. In court, BAT disputed Muita's claims. But documents submitted to court suggest BAT did make illegal payments. They show BAT paid MPs here in Uganda's parliament to undermine a proposed anti-tobacco law. The bill recommended a tightening of the laws surrounding tobacco. So, strict controls on where people could smoke, new controls on the way cigarettes could be marketed, restrictions of the displays of cigarettes in shops. It is safe to say that this was not a bill that BAT liked. One of the MPs who proposed the anti-tobacco bill was David Bahati. The intention, again, and the purpose of the bill is to protect the well-being and the health of Ugandans. But the court documents allege Bahati received thousands of dollars from BAT and that he was recruited by BAT Uganda to infiltrate influence and spy on the cohort of anti-tobacco activists. Minutes of a meeting between BAT and the MP say he supported having most of our views accommodated in the proposed tobacco law. David Bahati didn't respond to any of our questions, 
But just to be clear, an MP who is the poster boy for the anti-tobacco lobby was being secretly bribed by BAT. What do you make of that? If they're being paid specifically in order to amend legislation, uh, you've got a, a clear breach of duty. And if it's a clear breach of duty, the payment is a bribe. BAT told Panorama, Our accusers in this programme left us in acrimonious circumstances and have a vendetta against us, clearly demonstrated by the false picture they present of how we do business. The problem for BAT is the evidence of illegal behaviour keeps coming. Remember the bribes paid to undermine the UN Convention on Tobacco Control? Well, they were arranged by this woman, Julie Adele Owino, a BAT lobbyist. We've got the emails Owino sent when she was arranging the payments. They are extraordinary. The whole corrupt practice is laid bare. Take the corrupt payment to the Burundi official Godfoy Kamwenabusa. The cash wasn't just for his work undermining the UN. Julie Adele Owino wanted something else for BAT's money. We owe him $3,000, but this is also in exchange for the draft TCB that the minister has. TCB stands for Tobacco Control Bill. One email says that Kamwanabusa could accommodate any amendments before the president signs. It's another attempt by BAT to undermine an anti-smoking law. So what does Dr Kamwanabusa say about his bribe? Did you take $3,000 from BAT? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I think you did. So um, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through the paperwork with you. I think you're, you're not telling me the truth. So if you look at this email here, sir, this is an email that talks about you. Please. It's from somebody inside BAT, the lobbying group. If you read it, sir, it says, we owe him $3,000, but this is also in exchange for the draft tobacco control bill. It talks about you, sir. It talks this, about the money that they paid you. This, this, <laughs> me. You took money from BAT, didn't you? You took three thousand uh, dollars. I don't think so. I can give you more paperwork, sir. It all refers to you. What, 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 this what, is what, another what, piece. Of, this is another internal document from BAT, which refers to you, and it says the guy can accommodate any amendments before the president signs. Là, je ne je là comme comme ces ces emails je 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 m'en fiche des emails moi. Les emails là moi. Je ne fais confiance aux emails parce que c'est pas officiel. C'est pas officiel. So this is your chance to, to be honest. This is your chance. I know you took the bribes. No. Je I am dis, interested. Je dis, je dis non. Then there's the case of Moses Wetangula, Kenya's former Minister of Trade. He wanted a flight to London for his wife. Julie Adele Owino was happy to pay for it. We've agreed to get a ticket for his wife, find out how much the business class ticket will cost and buy it, paying by cash. The transaction needed to be... Paperless. No receipts, if any, in his name. Julie Adele Owino categorically denied involvement in bribery and said BAT was mistaken when it admitted that the payments were bribes. So what does the former minister say? The reason we wanted to talk to you is it's been suggested that you have... have have been corrupt and that you have taken things from BAT. Who me? This ticket, it was yes. to be paid for in cash yes. and given to your bodyguard. Yes. And 
there would be no yes. paper trail. Why, oh why would that happen? Oh, my God. First of all, I'm embarrassed to hear that. I'm upset to hear that. And I would take action against anybody who is brewing such a crude room against me. Because it looks like Let corruption, isn't it? It looks like corruption. Listen, man, you are now upsetting me because I did not receive any ticket or any money. I don't want to offend you, but I... Yes, it's my, you are offending. Well, sometimes I yes. accidentally offend because yes. I'm putting allegations, sir. You are and offending And they're based me. on evidence. Yes. These are not things that I've made up. You BAT have admitted that this counts as illegal I am bribery. Shocked it counts as illegal bribery. This. And I reserve the right to take legal action. But it looks like Let it's true, listen. so what would you say to our it viewers? Is, listen, my friend. It seems I, to be true. Let me repeat this again. Yeah. I have never had dealings with Beat. But the evidence suggests politicians and civil servants were paid bribes. They broke the law but it is BAT that faces the most serious questions, and not just from the UK authorities. The fines could be huge, especially in the US. The US will take it very seriously indeed. Every single suggestion of bribery, bribe scandal, if you like, uh, that affects a European company has automatically triggered an inquiry by the Department of Justice in the US. We first asked BAT about the bribery allegations three months ago. We've sent 16 emails to Chief Executive Nicandro Durante. But he hasn't answered any of our questions about the bribe payments we uncovered. Mr Durante! I caught up with him as his chauffeur dropped him off at BAT's London headquarters. So, can I ask you a quick question? I'm from uh, Panorama. Why did you not respond to our emails about bribery? Is that the nature of BAT, sir, that you just put up with bribery? Sir, could you come out and give us a, a quick answer to the questions? What should we make of your company? One question, sir. What should our viewers make of BAT? It's not terribly impressive, sir. We've been writing to you for months, sir. Why don't you just give us a response? No response. BAT later told us... The truth is that we do not and will not tolerate corruption, no matter where it takes place. And what about the whistleblower, Paul Hopkins? Well, this week, he plans to meet with investigators from the Serious Fraud Office in the UK. Britain's fifth biggest company will have to explain why its staff broke the law for such a long time in so many countries. Next here on BBC One, Dara O'Brien takes us on a journey of tomorrow's food. Over on BBC Two now, the penultimate episode of the brilliant London Spy. And on three, Stacey Dooley's in the USA with Girls Behind Bars. <laughs> 